Welcome to the TC Dojo from Single Sourcing Solutions. The TC Dojo is a TechCom community that is driven by you. Tell us what you want to learn. You choose the topics and we find the experts. In the open session today, we are lucky to have Romy Sina as our visiting Dojo master. Romy is a passionate technical communicator working as a senior staff information developer at Siemens AG. She's been there for the past 10 years. Before that, she was a software developer who enjoyed writing as much as coding. Romy has degrees in English and computer science and has found the perfect career match in technical communication. She's been actively involved with the STC and is a past president of the East Bay chapter. It's been my good fortune to get to know Romy. We served on the East Bay STC board together and I'm grateful she agreed to be our dojo master today. Okay, thank you for that introduction, Liz. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm Romy Sena and I uh, just, uh, just want to make sure everyone's able to see the first slide. Caesar topic, using Confluence for external facing product documentation. Are we all good, Liz? We are. Okay. So the topic today is using Confluence for external facing product documentation. And I stress a little bit on external because a lot of us do it for internal. So the question comes to me uh, on and off from my TechCom colleagues, how do you do it for your external facing product documentation? So I thought I'm gonna, okay, talk about that. Um, so this, the way I'm gonna present it today is using a documentation journey. Our journey, the way we do it, is um, how we use this platform or tool, whatever you want to call Confluence, is uh, how we start in the very beginning and go to the end using this. So that's the approach I'm going to use today. I'm not going to talk about stuff that you could go read up in Atlassian's website, uh, things that you'd find easily over there. So the focus today would be how uh, we, in our own docs department, use it for our benefit and our purposes. That way, I feel that uh, people in this uh, who are listening to us today uh, will be able to extract uh, how to how they could use it too so the whole I, my idea is to give you pointers to how you could use it to your benefit and a little side i i just want to throw it out there that the views and opinions today are my own and i don't represent uh, any of the organizations that i work for now or that i've worked for before purely my own <clears throat> Okay, so I left those two bullet points out there. The first two, I do say it's online and always available and users are able to access it 24 by seven. Yeah, um, but most companies for most documentation, you can do that these days. So that's not a big deal anymore, but I left it there because I want to uh, talk a little bit about the history. The history of when uh, we went, when we started using Confluence. So that was about 10 years back. So about 10 years back, we were using Word and printing it out in a book or on PDF. So then we decided let's do something bleeding edge. And 10 years back, Confluence was bleeding edge. Uh, now, I mean, now it's always, you know, everyone, they may, they may uh, write it somewhere, but you are still available online. But back in the day, that was bleeding edge. So I left it out there to point out that, hey, we've been using this 10 years and we have uh, molded it along the way. But, um, you know, it's been working. That's all I, uh, that's all I want to point out. We had to uh, use 
plugins, apps to make it a great experience for our customers. But we have been in this journey for the last 10 years. It is easy to use. And as we all know, uh, it's a wiki. So its main goal is to support collaboration. So that was the other idea that really uh, interested us. We didn't want our docs to be siloed. We wanted collaboration from everyone in the company. But in the company, we, did, we wanted writers with internal uh, from, uh, from most of our departments, like of course from engineering, some from product management, and that was a way to do it. Um, so the other thing that we really wanted uh, and liked about Confluence was it, it helped us to be interactive to a certain extent. You know, as documentarians and technical communicators, we know that we could be in our silo, we write, and we publish it in a, you know, in, a, in, in we publish it and then we have no interaction with our users. But with this confluence, it has a feature called comments at the end of every page. So what we did is, and what we do still is encourage our uh, customers, partners, all our users who have access to our docs uh, to use that, to communicate with us. And we have a policy that we respond within 48 hours. Now, customers love this feature. It, and I'm not just making this up because we have a con leadership conference every year where we meet all our customers and they did come up to me and say, Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, I can tell you, uh, you know, what I don't understand, what, you know, what I think is wrong. So, for example, we've had all kinds of comments, but most of them, I would say, are uh, useful. Sometimes someone will even say, point out a typo, um, but, you know, hey, it's okay. Uh, and some, most people will have questions. And sometimes we can tell them, hey, go read up somewhere else because they didn't read everything, you know. But you have to be polite. Um, the idea here is the interaction, you know. And it even to me as a person writing, as a writer, I thought it was pretty cool that I can interact with my user because usually that didn't come with it in, in other uh, in, in my other positions. And of course, uh, it also led to a little less support calls because, um, uh, and that too, I'm not making this up. They did, they, they do mention that, hey, uh, great, I could write to you, you guys got back and um, I didn't have to call support. So, you know, so that, that works, but, I have to tell you that sometimes it's it's annoying too, but that's all part of it. Okay, now moving on, how do we do it? This is something I want to uh, talk about a little bit. So when we started, we had about uh, some 10,000 odd pages of documentation. We had about three product lines, uh, but over 10 years, we have many more products and documentation would be, I was trying to do a rough calculation, at least 100,000 pages. So, but in the very beginning, we thought about how are we going to structure this? You know, uh, <clears throat> in all other tools, it's going to enforce you, the structures enforce, but not uh, in a wiki. The confluence being a wiki, uh, its main purpose was contribution, and everyone could contribute. Uh, but as most of you know, what happens is it becomes it it runs the risk of becoming a wild wild west. And I'm sure we all have heard of the term wiki gardener. You do need a wiki gardener. So in this case, we 
are our wiki gardeners, the documentation team. We are the gatekeepers. We decided we're not going to open it up so much that we lose control and that it's not useful anymore. So, and, and, and you know that question that people say, oh, we don't need docs anymore? Yeah, no, they do need, we, we do need docs because who is going to be the gatekeeper? People can contribute whatever they want. Where's the structure? So here we defined early on our content structure. We decided to do it by topics. And we would, we would have small topics, try to keep it as tight as possible, and it would follow the data principles of concept, task, and reference. We do provide uh, very detailed guidelines for writing these three types of topics in our, you know, in our style guide. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, anytime a new writer comes in, we, they, they go through they could read the style guide and figure out what we're looking for. Uh, and now, of course, we'd never enforce any of this to our uh, engineering writers, our product management. We just, uh, they can give us whatever they want and we curate them, edit them, and what have you. Um, <clears throat> so, so this is, I think, that has helped us keep it all in a good structure. This is one of the main reasons we could use it for our external facing product documentation. But again, I want to just mention here that there's nothing in the tool that's, um, that's asking us to do this. This is just by self-discipline. This is the discipline of the writers and self-discipline of the documentation team. But it works. You know, it's been working for 10 years. And so I think uh, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been working. So it's not that you have to have uh, that forced control. You could do it even otherwise. OK, so like I mentioned, in the beginning that I want to talk about the documentation journey. The, the journey of docs uh, using this vehicle of confluence. So in the very, as we all know, we all start with the TOC. I'll, I'll not spend too much time here and because this could be a whole different uh, topic by itself, but I'll quickly go over um, because to me, you start your documentation journey at the outline or the TOC. Now, what, uh, what we have here is some common elements across all products. For example, you know, we'll have a what's new, we'll have installation, configuration, we'll have data model, we have release notes, we have uh, property descriptions. Those are pretty much you can see that they, they, they could be like uh, same over all our product lines. So same, I mean, just the topic, of course, the content is different, but we, because this pattern is helpful to our customers. And uh, so we try to stick to that and um, we reuse our content. So now I want to segue from there into reusing content which as a writer and, and in our community is a big deal. So Confluence really helps us in that. A um, couple of things, there are many ways we reuse content, but I want to uh, just point out a couple of things. One is this feature of cloning a space. And I say clone a space at the right time. Uh, for example, uh, say we have a version of, pro of a product the product is say, you know, analytics 1.4. And now our engineering team is working on analytics 1.5. Um, I, and analytics 1.4 is on a service spec six. So analytics 1.4 service spec six is in production. And 
behind they're working on 1.5 so they we, what we do is we clone that 1.4 sp6 um, right after sp6 is released so that we have all the latest content usually a higher version is built on top of the immediate version so that helps us uh, so we would clone that space and reuse all the content and then we then we go over <clears throat> into you know and comb out like what whatever is um has been retired or um add new features but we have a place to start so that's what we do excuse me that's what we do for um re that's that's very helpful for reusing content the other two things that confluence provides and we use um pretty regularly are the excerpt and excerpt include and include page macros um you know it's very convenient because it saves time when we need to update something and we only have to update it once versus say 20 times. And it's also great for consistency. We, you know, cause we all know that we have seen definitions or explanations of the same thing with slight variations, you know, enough to confuse the reader. So I think uh, this this one really is useful. Okay, so uh, now moving on to say you have your in our journey. We have our TOC. We have the content. We have written it all up. Now, how do we present it? Presenting is the look and feel, and confluence has something called <clears throat> themes. So themes is pretty cool because you can build your own theme. Um, you can use their default. We used to be using the documentation theme, but with uh, we upgraded uh, recently with the latest upgrade, they kind of changed from document. They, they kind of uh, took away the documentation theme, tweaked it, made it into their default theme. So what we did is, you know, we kept the theme that we had and turned it into a custom theme. Um, and we, uh, we're thinking of, you know, experimenting <clears throat> a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Monday morning. <clears throat> I think I <clears throat> needed more coffee. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, but um, so so the theme is used for your landing page. How you want it to look how you want your landing page of your doc documentation so you could do like a, a product portfolio with expandable links that's what we have you could do whatever uh, you know you want but this one is kind of neat and it works pretty well you have all your products right there and once you click on a link it, it expands into um, um, all the versions of that product <clears throat> um, the dashboard. The dashboard in Confluence is the other thing that uh, I really use, and I know a lot of my colleagues use it, both in uh, docs and in product management and engineering. Because they come in and say somebody worked on it a week back and they've forgotten what they did. So they quickly look at um, the recently worked on um recently visited sometimes i use save for later i also use all updates in the morning i come back and we have teams across the world so uh, all over so people are working in the night and i come back and i see oh did anyone work on the page that i was working on or on that topic so it tells me what's going on so it's it's a very uh, good tool to use and i know Everyone uses it in their own kind of way. Um, another thing I want to talk about really quickly that <clears throat> helps this documentation process is the sidebar. And if this I did this white out because of legal, because uh, it's a you know a real document. So this is a little example of a sidebar and. 
it gives you a glimpse of uh, what you have in it's kind of like your toc uh, it's it's really not the toc would come on the page but again you could still call it like uh, what people are used to in their head what you have and you could scroll down there's a lot more uh, the cool thing is it tracks your location and you're not lost. You know, you know how many child pages are there, that you're in the landing page. It kind of gives uh, a sense of orientation because it's easy to get lost in the, uh, you know, in the internet sometimes. You click here, you click there, you don't know where you are. But this kinds of gives you a route. So that's that's pretty useful. Uh, the other useful thing is search. So now in, in our journey, you, you have your content and you, you, have, you know how to present it. You, you've worked out your look and feel, your sidebars, your dashboards. And so your customer or your user has it, but are they going to find it? You know, they don't go from top to bottom. No one does that. They first they just go search for you know they just want to search for it so i have to say that the confluence search like 10 years back was very not very helpful but over the years especially now with this upgrade we were we are in 6.13 it's pretty good it's pretty good so um people and can find stuff um, quite easily so that's good i just want to quickly touch upon the fact that you could do a space search, which is the most used one. You know, you are in one space looking for something and you use that. Uh, and the, you could also do a global search. That, that would mean it would search all, this, all the spaces that exist that they have access to. And you, and you have all these cool filters to search for. For example, you you want to search on, hey, I know Romy wrote something on this topic uh, she was mentioning, but I can't remember what it is. So you could go filter by author or contributor. You could type my name and it would show up or by date or what have you. There, there are at least nine or 10 filters. Uh, <clears throat> wait, I can't think. Navigation, I think we are running a little short on time. So I'm going to just quickly go through. Uh, um, I, I just want to at least mention them. The navigation is another useful tool for all of us writers. And Confluence has, um, you know, they do, they, they have this thing called relative links and deep links, which are very useful. I think they, they've helped us enhance our docs. and deep links means you just link not just to the page but to a subsection within a page or a subheading or subtopic relative links is you link to a page and uh, say you say c page abc and six months down the line you change page abc to xyz uh and it's going to conference going to change it your c abc to xyz so that's very helpful because you don't end up with broken links. Okay, very quickly. So now, how this is another important way to do gatekeeping and control and keep it all neat and tidy and tight in spite of using uh, collaboration, right? In, in, in spite of getting contributions from everyone, we can still not make it into a wild, wild west. That's by using this permissions. You can restrict permissions to yourself, to your team, to a few members, whatever, whatever you want to do. And once you're ready, you could open it up. So, and Confluence has inbuilt permissions, but if you want it uh, to be more sophisticated, you could, um, you know, you could, you could use some third party apps so the third party apps, like um, we use a workflow. Uh, let's see, a little bit about the workflow. That's kind of uh, the one we use to control editing and publishing. At the end of the day, 
uh, yeah, we are not we 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 are not uh, using um, a separate uh, publishing tool. It's one same thing, but we do have some control. This workflow is from Kamala Tech. It used to be called um, it used to be, it is now it's called um, document management, and it has several states uh, like like I mentioned here, draft, technical review, and there are is there is gatekeeping at every step. So it just, you know, and for uh, uh, publishing, we have public, given publishing rights to very few people, even within the docs team. So that's, that's, that's the way you, you can have, uh, this is a very important step in making it external facing. Of course, uh, the docs that we have for internal um, within 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 the company that doesn't have workflow or anything like that or publishing we don't need that. Okay, so to me this is the end of our documentation journey. You you write it you 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 know you you put it out there you present it you make sure your customers can search it and they can navigate within your docs. So you've taken care of everything and now you publish it and it's all, you know, it's there. But, but I have to talk about PDF export because in spite of being online and all of that, we still have people who will ask for a PDF. And uh, there is, uh, we, so we, we allow them to print their own PDF because Confluence allows us page by page, but we do not allow them to print the whole uh, topics because of legal. So what we do is we export it out and attach it on a page right with our along with our docs with copyright and title page. And we will put a disclaimer that, hey, this is out of date as of today if I, if I export it today. And we do it with a major release, which would be like once in two months, three months. It could be more or less, but, um, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Um, so we, there is this option of PDF export for people who wants a written copy or, you know, a printed copy to read when they're on a long flight or what have you. So that, that option's there. And I think we are over one minute over, but I'll quickly uh, just talk about, I'll take a minute or two and talk about the world of macros. I just want to tell everyone who's listening today that uh, there is this whole world of macros in Confluence that you could look up, but these are some of the ones that we use. I just I just put in, a, we of course use many, many more, but these are some of the common ones that we use. We do have custom plugins. These are things that we wrote on our own. We have, and you, people can write their own. So, and it, and, uh, that will work with your confluence. We do use a lot of third party plugins. These are just a few that I mentioned. Gliffy is for a diagram. Excel is uh, from this person called Bob Swift. He, he has a lot of apps that he writes for Confluence. Um, and uh, Excel, we use it, for example, for our data model and the Komala workflow, as I mentioned before, for the documentation management. I did mention a few other useful features and that this is for me. I really uh, use a lot of this to watch page history, the copy page, you know, another um, for content reuse, you could copy one page or child pages, the whole hierarchy. So uh, all these options are there that really helps uh, me in my daily life as a writer or, or you know, editor or t technical communicator, what do you want, however you want to use this, this is, uh, these are the things I just want to point out to people if you uh, need to use them. And the other thing here is uh, there is a little checkbox and a comment box that on every Confluence page, if you edit, you could write what you changed. 
because it is a collaborative tool at the end of the day, people are writing stuff, but you need to know why. For example, a very uh, quick uh, example, say an engineer updates, updates a page. They're never going to update a page without, uh, without a reason. Maybe there was a support ticket or maybe, you know, he changed something in the code and he needs to update it and he quickly goes and does it without telling us and we have no idea what's in his head or what he did. So this really helps. And we also ask them to put a Jira ID, which means just a tracker of uh, tickets. And it could be different in your company, but the idea is to link it all together so that you tie it all together and um, you know, it's nothing's lost out there. Now it's time to type in those questions if you haven't already. And while you do, here's a look at what's coming up. The TC Dojo Mastermind Groups are monthly driven member discussion groups where attendees present their specific challenges to a group of their peers in a confidential supportive environment. A mastermind is a collaborative environment where everyone lends their experience to each other. They can get feedback and advice about topics on their mind in real time from others who've been in their shoes. It's been amazing to participate in and a lot of fun too. We have three going on right now. One is everything tech comm, data, topic-based authoring, the specifics of cross-references or graphics. The other two are product-focused on WindChill for IT and ArborText users. These sessions are not free. They're a way to guarantee commitment between the participants. You can sign up at the TC Dojo website at mastermind.tcdojo.org. We know sometimes magic is just having the time to collaborate with someone who's been where you are. You mentioned users having access to your docs. Curious about your solution for authenticated docs. Our organization is debating between paying for a lot more for extra Confluence server licenses or finding an SSO solution on the App Store. Um, how have you solved the unique user login versus cost of Confluence licenses? Unfortunately, they can't make their content publicly viewable. Any ideas? So um, this is more, uh, I do have a little bit of an idea, this is, but this is more taken care of by our IT. And I know that uh, we do pay for our licenses. That, and if you want, I could, but I, we and the, the documentation team doesn't have to worry about that. We have our, uh, you know, IT taking care of that. But I know we do pay for all the licenses. And we do have our own, you know, servers and all of that. And um, so and we have been a customer for like 10 years from Confluence. So they do have something, some under some, uh, as far as I know, what IT does is uh, buy their licenses at this point, yeah. We don't All have right. to worry, worry well, about let's it. Let's see. Uh, Aaron, be sure and tell us if that sort of approximates a way to get your answer. Uh, it looks like one of the other people said that they have a similar issue and were forced to just buy the unlimited license tier. Um, so maybe they can get a referral to someone in IT who can answer those questions from you. All right. So let's see what else we've got. Um, on the other side, we've got some in the chat window. So I'm trying to get these in about the order I saw them in. Uh, can you host Jekyll-based static website on Confluence? Do you know? Say that. Can I, can I hear that again? Can you host a Jekyll-based static website on Confluence? I'm not sure. You know, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that. Okay. But we haven't done that, so. All right. Well, Richard, uh, maybe someone can follow up from inside. That We got had somebody else asking about that, so I'll try to connect you all together. Um, how about this? Do you have a process or setting to or setting to keep comments from getting spammed? Is it external, public, or to logged in users? Okay, I can answer that one. So our documentation is um, only given to our. It's not open to general public. Say if you you want to go check it, you won't be able to do it. It's only given to our customers and partners. So right there, you know, it's not public. So we can pretty much 
track down everyone who's writing a comment. Uh, so they will be either a customer or a partner. And no, we never have this problem of spamming or anything. I mean, we do have some people that we've recognized because they're usually the ones commenting a lot. But yeah, never went up to the point where, you know, it, it, it was a problem. But that could be because it's really, it's not the whole wide world. Good answer. Okay, so here's one. Um, we have to offer our customers multiple formats, standalone help, PDF, Word, and so on. Uh, however, our organization is reluctant to pay for the add-ons and plugins to make a round-trip publishing more robust in Confluence. How do you accommodate users who want documentation in a different format? I know you mentioned PDF already. Yes. So, okay. So we we uh, pretty much make it clear in the beginning that uh, this is what you got. We have online docs and it's great and it's cool. And some people will say, but we need to something in our hands. And for them, we have the PDF. We did buy a plugin license, I think for scroll PDF exporter to make it more professional and pretty than just uh, Confluence Zone. So those are the only two things we have. It's out there online or in a PDF. And I don't, I don't recollect anyone complaining that they need something else. All right. I will say that um, over the years, I've heard uh, other groups that deal with this problem. This is something that sales can sell, actually. If a specific customer wants a specific format, that's something you can sell to them as part of the contract. Um, so you might redirect that upwards to address that issue. Um, because if money's coming in, then, you know, it's a lot easier to buy the plugin. All right, so let's, here's, an, here's another one. Uh, back over to the chat window. Do you have, do you use templates for your documentation types like concept, task, or reference? Um, yes, to a certain extent, yes. So, um, but it's not, it's, it's, we have templates for helping people get started. Yes, we do. And then, because um, we, we realize that it's just easier for people to write when they have a template. Uh, it's, it's hard to write on a blank page, right? You come in, there's nothing. Uh, the, the people freak out. So we try to give a template. And uh, the TOC that I was mentioning, so what we do is uh, if I, I try to make a TOC and follow the template and give it out to them for, for our collaborators and contributors, and they kind of fill, fill in. And once it's filled in, it's just easier to, uh, you know, go through the cycle, like, uh, reviewing it and all that. Yeah, so in a way, I would say, yes, we do have some form of templates for concept, task, and reference. For task, for sure, it's easier, yeah. Okay, so related, but a different question. How do you organize your topics? For example, do you include topic pages at higher level pages to group them? Uh, we have about 150 entities and 750 operations in the product uh, and host our docs, our API docs is HTML with the public Confluence space, but they're not inside. Um, so I guess that's an answer for Richard. So here's the question again. Mm -hmm. How do you organize your topics? Do you include a topic page, higher level pages to group them? Uh, we have about 150 entities and 750 operations in the product. How okay. do you group things? Okay, good question. Um, so we go by, I, 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 we go by product. So we, for every product, we have a space. And yes, we do have what we call a landing page for every product. And we, uh, so the landing page will tell you a little bit about the product. It'll introduce you to the product. And then it'll tell you, uh, all the topics so for that we use that it 
something called the children display macro. So the children display is nothing but all the child pages of that parent page, which is the holding page. So yes, so we introduce that, we tell them everything. Uh, and how do we group? We go from a higher level drill down. So we go from a 30,000, you know, 30,000 feet all the way down, all the way down. So our, the way we approach it is, say you don't know anything about our product, you can come, go drill down all the way and you will know as the, it's like an onion peel. So as you keep peeling, you you learn more, you go into the depths. Say you don't even need, say it's some salesperson or just a product manager or higher up leadership. They never read how to install and configure. They just read uh, the first, what's in it. Say the, it, what's, what's new or what's new in this release or introduction to X, Y, Z. That's what they read. So we group uh, by if you if you want to think about it first you have the concept and then you go slowly into other topics and all the tasks uh, and somewhere along you'll have um, configuration for the system integrators so that's kind of how we do it um, and uh, what else can i say i think the onion peel is a better is a good example of our strategy. All right, does so there's that, a related question, actually. Hopefully, yeah. Does that answer your question, or what else do you mean by grouping? Right. I will type that and let me know. It looks like she said yes. Thank you. Uh, related though is this one: Is all of your content in one large knowledge space, or are there multiple spaces? So we have one large, so we have, say we have docs.emeter.com. Um, it's emeter because we used to be a startup. We are Siemens now for the last seven years, but the URL is still docs.emeter.com. So under that, we have many, many spaces. So it, it, so one whole knowledge center, if you want to call it, or we call it documentation center, uh, is holds many, many spaces, each space for our product. For example, our main meter data management product, analytics, um, we, we have, you know, different, all different products have a space and all the spaces spaces are grouped together under the big umbrella. So if you have permission to say docs.emeter.com, you can get to uh, most of the spaces. And you may or may not, if you don't buy analytics, you won't have permission to see that. So that's just how it works. All right, so there's two last questions. Um, here's this looks like one easier and one harder maybe I'm not sure uh, all right I'm how sorry. does your content <laughs> how does your content reuse strategy look like do you use out of the box match macros yes we do use out of the box macros like um, the excerpt excerpt include I think for content reuse we only use out of the box. I cannot think of anything that we have third party license for. Okay. Yeah. All right. And here's the last one. Some of my coworkers have visual impairments as do most of our users. Do you know if Confluence is accessible for document creation? And on the other end, does Confluence produce accessible documentation for end users? Great question. So, yes, so accessibility, I think that question you can get in Atlassian's website. You know, that is, that will be covered in Confluence's own website. 
And sure, I think everyone's doing it these days and they're doing it too. As, as, as far as we are concerned, we are also, we try to be very, uh, ex, uh, you know, aware of this and we're trying to uh, be conscious and we use it in, in our own documentation. We are, we do take care of uh, accessibility concerns. And we are, uh, you know, we, uh, we follow the guidelines as much as we can. So yes, you can do it. But I think uh, you'll get a better answer in, you just go into Confluence's web, Atlassian's website, in, into Confluence documentation. All right, good answers, good questions. Yeah, a lot All of right. interesting <laughs> questions, Liz. A lot of interesting questions, but some of those IT questions are the ones that, you know, uh, I could get back on unless if you want me to, because uh, those are the ones that I don't deal with those. They're just taken care of. Right. So. So anybody who had an IT question, maybe you can uh, reach out to Romy and see if she can get you at least a referral or refer your IT guys to the, her IT guys and maybe they can have a chance to talk. That's the kind of thing we do in the mastermind all the time, actually, referrals and talking about things that we all deal with. All right, looks like yeah. it did answer their question. Thanks for coming to the Single Sourcing Solutions TC Dojo where it's all about you, what you wanna learn. You should always attend a webinar live because you can't ask questions of a video. Subscribe to our TC Dojo mailing list at join.tcdojo.org and never miss another. Every month we go out and find experts willing to share their expertise based on your votes in the TC Dojo survey. Why should we tell you what to learn? You should tell us. So be sure to vote at survey.tcdojo.org. The TC Dojo is our pleasure to host. As always, if you need more personal help, we're here to take you from the basics to mastery. See you next time.